Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and talk about none other than the OnePlus 7 Pro and see how it holds up in 2021. Now what I can tell you is about this specific device is that it's honestly one of those phones that is just so timeless in so many different ways. It's not necessarily like the greatest phone ever made, but for this manufacturer, OnePlus specifically, I honestly think it was one of the biggest shifts that they've done and I think at the end of the day this phone is still completely worth it and it may even be more worth it now than it was before but there is kind of a changing thing about OnePlus 7 Pro and just OnePlus in general that's really scaring me and scaring a lot of other consumers as well. Now if you want to pick this phone up not only will I leave the OnePlus 7 Pro link down below but also a couple other phones that I'd probably recommend throughout this year as well. You can get them from there to help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the front of the OnePlus 7 Pro this is, in my opinion, probably the biggest change and the biggest asset for the OnePlus 7 Pro and one of the main reasons why this phone is still being talked about in so many different videos. Every time I watch any video that's like a tech thing, this phone sometimes is mentioned. You know, I don't really hear like the Galaxy S9 being mentioned all that often or like the iPhone XS, but this phone is always being mentioned, which is so awesome because of that panel. It had that 6.67 inch fluid AMOLED display and there was no camera hole on it. We had that camera, you know, pop-up camera, which I didn't like at all, but at least it had it. But it was the fact that it also had that 90 hertz refresh rate. Now this was not the first phone ever to bring a higher refresh rate, but it was one of those phones that kind of made it popular. And I think it was the mixture of the 90 hertz refresh rate and the lack of a hole punch display that really added a lot more character to this device at the end of the day. And as I stated before, that was seriously one of the best things about the OnePlus 7 Pro and probably the number one reason why the 7 Pro is still talked about is because of this front panel for sure. Now you do have USB Type-C on the bottom. You you don't have any expandable storage so it's no micro SD card slot or anything you also don't have any you know expandable storage which that is also something that's kind of dumb you know but it is what it is no one plus device except the one plus x had expandable storage but on the back we do have a glass back on this device as well which as stated before is another huge asset for it. this phone still feels like a very premium phone at the end of the day and as i always state that's just one of those biggest advantages for these type of devices you don't necessarily want to have a phone that has a plastic bag like the s21 or the note 20 you want to have a phone that still has a lot of capability and just is future proofed in any way possible and this is one of those devices that definitely has that type of capability now there's no wireless charging no reverse wireless charging on this device either and that really makes me choke up too because it's just one of those things that it should have had like it, it just doesn't make any sense to me but on top of that i actually missed another super important thing on the front and that was the embedded fingerprint sensor in the display now the predecessor of this device also had the fingerprint sensor in the display but it was just a mixture of so many different things like that that made this phone feel more like a flagship than what it was even though it was missing ip certification and stuff it still felt like a pretty big flagship device in my opinion which is awesome so at the end of the day the body of this phone the panel the features on the outside are probably one of the biggest reasons why the oneplus 7 pro is a timeless phone at the end of the day and it's still a beautiful phone and one that's talked about a lot now we do have that triple camera setup on the back as well which i'll go ahead and hit on right now so this is kind of what i call the triple thread if you watch my other videos you know what this means we had that 48 megapixel so wide angle lens, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor. Now, this is a pretty okay camera, you know, when it first came out. It definitely wasn't the best camera and I feel like since then it's probably gotten okay like it really isn't even that bad of a camera in this day and age because it's been a little bit older it's gotten down in price but when it first came out a lot of people were comparing it to the S10 and the iPhone 11 Pro at the time so maybe it should have been compared to maybe it shouldn't but at the end of the day this camera I think is still a pretty okay camera we have 4k at 60 which that in and of itself is another really cool thing you know I mean no 8k or anything but most OnePlus devices still can only do 4k at 60 so I think it's okay for the most part however on the front this is the biggest difference between a lot of other devices in this one it did have that motorized pop-up camera so it was that wide angle lens now I think at the end of the day it's okay like it's totally an okay sensor but my biggest problem with this camera was that it could only shoot 1080p videos a majority of the phones that we had in 2019 at this day and age could only could do more than 1080p it could do 4k at 60 the Galaxy S10 could do 4k at 60 the iPhone 11 Pro the iPhone iPhone 11s could do 4K at 60. This device did not have any type of capability like that, but in this day and age as well, the OnePlus 8 Pro, the OnePlus 8T, all these phones can still not do 4K at 60. Like, it's so funny to me. So, 
at the end of the day, that's another pretty big disadvantage when you have a device like this. You're not necessarily going to be getting like an amazing camera on the front. It's kind of like a novelty, like you're getting that pop-up camera, but the quality of that camera really isn't that great. That's kind of a pretty big disadvantage when it comes down to it. But as I stated before, that back camera is still pretty relevant. 4K at 60, you still have a lot of capability and you have the ability of zooming in a lot and zooming out a lot. So I think that is a pretty good thing in and of itself. So at the end of the day, the camera probably gets a thumbs up for me in my books. Now the best thing about the OnePlus 7 Pro, I, I think this is probably the most surprising thing, but also one that in OnePlus is kind of going away from their, their software and kind of like their battery. Their battery, I think, is actually really, really good on this device for the age and for actually having that 90 hertz refresh rate and a 1440p display. I wasn't expecting this battery to be as good as it is, but here's the biggest problem with OnePlus right now. First of all, their software pre-Android 11 and pre-Auction OS 11 was set to be some of the best software in my opinion. It was probably up there with, it was better than stock Android, I think, you know, that I've been saying that for years now. That is definitely one of my favorite versions of Android, but right now from going from Android 10 to Android 11, I have not installed Auction OS on any of my devices that are supported, but and I think it's still in a beta form, but from everything that I'm seeing on the Android subreddit, from the OnePlus subreddit, it looks to me that OnePlus is changing away from their stock Android approach and they're trying to make some sort of, and I don't know why they're trying to do this, but they're trying to make some sort of like, you know, like one UI on Oxygen OS kind of mixture hybrid type of software. And this, in my opinion, could be the biggest mistake OnePlus could ever make. They've made a lot of weird things, the lack of IP certification, the lack of wireless charging on some phones, and even maybe even like with the cameras on the front. But if they go away from their number one selling factor which is their software there's really not much more to a oneplus device yeah the 120 hertz refresh rates are nice and all that stuff but a majority of people if they're not going to go for the oneplus for the software and if they're already increasing the price they're just going to go with the galaxies because a lot more people know about samsung galaxy or they may even switch to an iphone who knows oneplus is going to lose a lot of market share if they choose to go with their software that it's looking like they're going to be so i hope and i pray to every day to oneplus that they don't go with their auction os 11 the way it's looking like please keep it more like stock android and on a oneplus 7 pro people are just going to stop buying it and they're just not going to want to update their phone if the next version of software is even more bloated than the previous one nobody wants that that's just like so outdated nobody likes that anymore i don't know why they're trying to do it so that could be the biggest reason why people would stop going for the oneplus 7 pro but the biggest you know one of the biggest assets of the oneplus 7 pro is the battery life that 4000 million power battery inside of it is seriously some good stuff it's a really good size battery i love the size of it and it's kind of funny because the battery does go hand in hand with the software, but it could be a really big flop if OnePlus decides to go away from their stock Android approach. They're going to not only affect the whole entire user profile, but they're going to affect the battery life as well. And hopefully, I swear, please, OnePlus, do not change the software to how we think you're going to change it. So in terms of that, that's probably one of the worst aspects of OnePlus in the future for the 7 Pro. But another good area about the 7 Pro, this video is everywhere, is the performance. I mean, this thing, when it first came out, had that Qualcomm Snapdragon. 855 chipset which was the best Qualcomm chipset at the time for phones and then we also had 6 gigs of RAM on the base model, 8 gigs of RAM on the mid-tier model, then 12 gigs of RAM on that top tier model. So what this means is that this phone's performance at the end of the day was actually a pretty good performing phone. And funny enough, if you get that mid-tier model, you actually have just as much RAM as the you know, Galaxy S21 Plus and the Galaxy S21. But if you get that top tier model, you actually have more RAM than the Galaxy S21 and all those other devices too. I think even the S21 Ultra. So you're definitely getting a lot of RAM on this specific device. And at the end of the day, even with the base tier model which I have this is still a really good smooth performing phone and again that has a lot to do with the software when you have a device that isn't running on a crazy bloated version of software the performance can really be enhanced by the user experience just because of the strict software itself so that's another huge aspect of the oneplus 7 pro but also the chipset inside of it, the 90 hertz refresh rate, also added a lot more character to the device in terms of the performance segment as well. So as I stated before, the performance of the OnePlus 7 Pro is still extremely good. No matter what you do with it for the most part, you're probably going to have a really good experience for sure at the end of the day. So in terms of the performance segment, that really pretty much covers it up. Now to kind of sum up the video and to answer the question, is the OnePlus 7 Pro still worth it in 2021? Well, let me go ahead and list some of the pros and maybe even some of the cons as well. So first of all, the OnePlus 7 Pro's panel is beautiful. That 6.67 inch panel on it is still one of the best panels out. It's beautiful. It looks really good and there's really not that much to complain about. And the USB Type-C on it is great. The back feels amazing. The triple camera setup on the back is also pretty good. You have that fingerprint sensor on the back as well, which like I stated before, is a huge asset for it. And when you 
have a device that has this type of capability with this type of body, with this type of panel, you're definitely going to be having an overall great experience, at least in the feeling of the hand. That pop-up camera, whether you like it or not, is definitely a novelty, and I'm sure some people do like it at the end of the day. So that's another pretty funny thing about it. I honestly don't know if anybody's super hyped up about it, but it has that capability, which is cool. The software right now is stock. It's still going to get software support. You can root this thing, custom ROM it, and the price has gone down a lot. So it's really not that expensive to pick up, but there are some cons about this phone as well. It's definitely not perfect. The lack of expandable storage is something that a lot of phones are, you know, kind of getting rid of now, but it would have been cool if it had it. No IP certification, no wireless charging, no reverse wireless charging. So those can be kind of big problems for some people. And again, that's another pretty big thing to keep in mind. The pop-up camera on the front isn't really that good quality. Like I said, it's a novelty, but it's not that great of a quality of a camera. So that does kind of affect me in some ways. And those are really the main disadvantages. I can't even try to think of anything off the top of my head. Like this is a really good phone still in my opinion. And if you want, I would probably still recommend it highly. I just really wish OnePlus were to switch away from their current way they're looking like Auction OS 11 is going to be. I really wished it was more kind of like the stock approach that we've seen before. But again, there's nothing we can really do about it. And this seems to be the way that OnePlus is going. But I think the hardware of the 7 Pro is still amazing. And for sure at the end of the day, the 7 Pro is a really, really good phone to pick up for sure. So that that really pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well, my Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.